Friends in Christ, last weekend I was putting up some Christmas decorations and I got out our nativity. We've got kind of a decent sized one that we put on a table and it's kind of prominent and I like it. We've had it for years, but I noticed as we put out the, as I put out the nativity, the figures that are in there, there's obviously Mary and Joseph and the baby Jesus, and there's three wise men and just a single shepherd. There are other nativities that have more figures in them. Some have multiple shepherds, some have um, angels, other animals there, but, but ours just has the single shepherd. He's kind of a, a passive little kneeling shepherd with a little lamb in, in his arms and, and fits so neatly in the background, almost as kind of just rounding out the other figures that are maybe the more important ones. Because if you think about the important figures there, certainly Mary, Joseph, Jesus, the wise men bringing their gifts and the symbolism of that, and the shepherds, yes, but I don't know, they had their scene with the angels out in the fields, and then they just maybe seem like like their filler. I don't know if you were ever in a Christmas pageant when you were younger, maybe you had some bathrobe-like costume and you were a shepherd, It's a background role for the middle school guys who just want to carry a stick and not have to do much. But I don't know, here in this text, did you catch it at the beginning? Shepherd, that's the prominent role here. We know there are other times and places, certainly shepherd, but here, give ear, O shepherd of Israel, you who lead Joseph like a flock, you are enthroned upon the cherubim shine forth the cherubim that's the angels the entourage it's the taylor swift followers that come along with her but the shepherd is the key person in this scene right and it's interesting that certainly as we fast forward and say jesus the good shepherd david shepherd king of israel and we connect some of those dots. But but for God himself, centuries before Jesus came, God is the shepherd of Israel that they're calling out to. And that's the name that they choose to call him for help. They say, God, you're a shepherd, and we need your help. Specifically, they say, Stir up your might and come to save us. Now, they had been ravaged by some enemies, foreign powers, we don't know exactly who, but they were in dire straits. They were not doing well, and they were calling out to God. And this stir up your might, come and save us, stir up in some other translations is wake up. Kind of like we heard yesterday from Dr. Taylor, we're asking for the awareness of what's going on and for God to be aware of us as much as he calls us to be aware of other things. And so how, when God's people call out to him, save us, how does he come like a shepherd to save them? Sometimes I think it's like the unlikeliness of that nativity scene. The most unlikely scenarios where there's actually hope, and where there's salvation. It's the seeming impossibility of God's plan that leaves us in awe and wonder of how God saves us. Did you hear the description of Israel in the midst of that? How long, O God, will you be angry with your people's prayers? You've fed them with the bread of tears and given them tears to drink in full measure. You make us an object of contention for our neighbors. Our enemies laugh among themselves. It's a pitiable condition. All you've got to eat and drink are your own tears. People are making fun of you. Things are not good. You're kind of at the end of your rope. I don't know if 
You draw any parallels to the end of the semester and your, your kind of ragged condition as I look out and see a bedraggled faithful band making it to the end. And we call out to God, God, help us and save us. And how would we want God to save us at the end of the semester? You know what your plan might be? It was a plan that I had multiple times. God, let me get all A's with minimal effort, no undue stress, no lack of sleep, no anxiety. Let me find the perfect gift for everyone and let them all be on sale at an unbelievably low price. My kindness and love will overflow and exude wonderfulness to all. I'll be like floating on a cloud, just like an angel with a little halo. Put me in the manger scene, the nativity. Wouldn't that be great? That that's how God chooses to end your semester. That would be our plan. But then we would be the star of our own story, wouldn't we? If it all worked out that easily, we think of Christmas movies, like that classic Christmas movie, Die Hard, right? That's enough to get any argument started. How do we want the, the, the rescue to happen? Bruce Willis, he's going to come in. It's going to be exciting. There'll be heroes to save the day. Where's Vin Diesel and Dwayne The Rock Johnson with their flamethrowers to kill all the bad guys? That's how we solve things. That's how we want to be saved. But God, he's this unlikely shepherd that he chooses. And Israel realized they needed God. They called on him to rescue them. But God does things in his wisdom in a way that we would never do, in a way that we would not anticipate. One of my favorite quotes that I <clears throat> translate in a different way to apply to, to Christmas and our Savior is a Winston Churchill quote from World War II. So Winston Churchill in World War II talking about Russia, Russia was kind of an unknown. They were big and they were powerful and they were to be feared because of their size and their power, but no one quite knew what to make of them. There was a lot of mystery with Russia and who they were really with and who they were against. So Winston Churchill said this about Russia. He said, the Russia of our day is like a riddle wrapped up in a mystery inside an enigma. It's just a cool quote. A riddle wrapped up in a mystery inside an enigma. You can't figure it out even when you peel back the layers. That's what some people think of God. He's big and powerful, and if you get him on your side, that'll be great. But God said, that's not me, because instead of that riddle wrapped in a mystery inside an enigma, he came to be a baby wrapped up in a blanket inside a manger. And that was God's plan for how he was going to save us, how he was going to deliver us, so that at the end of his life, our Savior could be a despised man, stripped naked of his swaddling clothes, on a hill, hanging on a cross. And that's God's plan to save us all. I don't know if you see the might and power of God in that, God's just a ancillary figure on the side of a manger scene. Yes, the Savior came. Savior of the nations come, and he did. But in the unlikely ways. So as we live out our, our last days of the semester, and not to sound so dramatic about that, as we come to the end of the semester and our thoughts are in lots of different ways, we can see God maybe in the unexpectedness of how he rescues and how he saves and how he helps. Not as we think, but as he wills. And that'll make the best Christmas ever, in Jesus' name. 
We have many prayers this morning, and so I'll invite you, as is our custom, to rise and pray together. <clears throat> Dear God, our Father, we thank you for watching over us, for coming into our world to rescue us, not to avoid death, but to go right through it and come to conquer death and the resurrection. Lord, a number of families have, have suffered the loss of loved ones. We lift up Professor Linda Hensel and her family. Her mother-in-law passed away after a long life of faith. For Jennifer Peters from Selt and her family, her father-in-law passed away last Friday. For adjunct Professor Rebecca Whitaker, her father passed away last week after suffering a massive heart attack days earlier. For Justin Frisk and his family, his wife's grandfather passed away in a car accident on Saturday. Her uncle is in critical condition from the crash as well. Lord, for these families and for all who mourn, we pray a peace that passes understanding. We pray that you would comfort them with your presence, but even more with your promise that all who trust in Jesus as the Savior do indeed live forever. Lord, we lift up those in need of healing, of Justin Frisk's uncle from the car crash of the teenage daughter of Professor Cindy Lund, who's undergoing surgery today. Lord, for these and others, we pray that you would, uh, according to your gracious will, grant them healing, that you would give wisdom and skill to those who attend to them, that they might have a full recovery and, and the patience that it takes to heal, knowing the comfort of your love and care in their times of need. Lord, be with us, too, in granting us patience and peace during these busy days. Lord, give us an extra measure of, of patience with each other and, and of peace and, and the ability to be in harmony in these, these busy, stressful days that we might finish details of the semester well, that it would be to your glory. And Lord, finally, again, we, we lift up the situation in the Middle East that rages on. Hamas and Israel, Lord, give comfort to those who've lost loved ones. Lord, we pray healing for the injured, safety for those who are, are captive, who are innocent in harm's way. Lord, turn the hearts of those leaders that there might be a quick end to this conflict and that a peace that could be seen in Jesus could predominate. Lord, all these things we pray in Jesus' name, amen. We go with God's blessing. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen.